Today we're going to take a look at the Dexter Trailer Hub and Drum Assemblies. Now there are several reasons why someone would want to change the hubs on their trailer. Either age, they're getting very old, trailer's been sitting for a long time, moisture got inside, caused corrosion that way. Maybe the brake assembly itself locked up on you. It overheated that drum and we've got hot spots or cracking in it. Or you can have these machined or turned, they can turn the drums, and you've just had it done so much that it's expanded too far, so it's beyond the specification. Now these drums are going to work for 12 inch by 2 inch brake assemblies. They're going to be from the 5200 up to the 7000 pound axle, each one and bearing kits rated for 3500 pounds, so a total of 7000. Now Dexter provides us with just about everything we're going to need. We've got new lug nuts for our half inch wheel studs. We've got the new dust cap here and the easy lube plug. Also going to have two new bearings, inner and outer, and you're going to have your seal. So all in all, this is a way to completely replace all of these components, get it right back to factory fresh, and you'll have no problems with it heading down the road. Something else that I like, it's going to come with the eight lug nuts that we need, so we're not going to have to worry about our old ones if those were cross-threaded. If we had any kind of issues, everything's going to be fresh. Now these offer heavy-duty iron construction. As you're putting them on, you can feel the weight and the density of them, and they're going to be designed to work with both the electric or hydraulic braking systems. And as we can see right here, these are made right here in the United States. Now to begin our replacement process, we're going to need to gather a few simple tools Basically, we want a dead blow hammer, a pair of channel locks, and needle nose pliers. These are really all we're going to need to get this replacement done. The first thing we need to do is get rid of our grease cap here on the end. Generally, we're going to tap outward. You can see that gap starting to increase. And that'll pop off. Once that's out of the way, we've got a cotter pin located right here our cotter pin out of there. Now with our channel locks we need to get a hold of this large nut here and get it removed. Now as we take this apart we want to salvage this washer right here. This is our kind of our thrust bearing there. And that's the only thing that doesn't come with our new drum assembly. We've got new lug nuts, we've got a new cap, new bearings, new seals. This is that one component we want to be sure to hang on to when we put it back together. Now we're just going to start working our hub assembly off. You can see that old bearing. We're going to get rid of that. The brakes are kind of hanging up a little bit. We're going to be replacing those too, so I'm not too worried about them. So I'm just kind of using a pry bar just to get them worked off of here. And we'll slide it off. Now as you can see, we've got all the grease off that spindle, got rid of all the old stuff, and this is our time to inspect it. We need to ensure basically that three main areas are in good shape. You've got this area here, this is where gonna be where the inner bearing rides, nice and smooth, no issues there. Same thing out here where our outer bearing goes. And then right in here on this wider area, you can see where it's real shiny there. That's where our seal is gonna ride as it goes around. So we're just gonna Kind of rub our finger around there and make sure there's no nicks or dents or scratches or anything like that. What happens if we have that here, as we fill this with grease, it's going to expand into our brakes and that's not what we want. This one looks really good. If you have any discolored areas where it looks like it got hot, if you have any cracks that are running down through here, or if it looks like it's kind of been turned where the bearings have come apart in there and caused some issues, might be a candidate for replacement rather than just putting on hubs and drums. Now the first step in getting our hub installed is going to be to pack our bearings. Now you can do this by hand, by just putting a big wad of grease in your hand there and then capturing it, forcing it in through here until it comes out of this upper portion. Or you can use a bearing packer like what we've got here. Now this we're going to put our cone down in the middle, then we're going to force it down until grease comes through. You can see those red driplets all the way around here indicate we've got the grease all the way through. This is going to be our outer bearing. It's going to be closest to the outside. The larger bearing is going to be our inner bearing. Just get both of those full. 
Now the larger inner bearing, we want to drop this in the back of our hub assembly. Now we'll grab our seal and a dead blow hammer. Now if you don't have a dead blow hammer, you can use a 4x4 block and a regular hammer. We just don't want to hit this with a metal hammer, it'll probably deform it on us. We want to get that centered really well. We need to knock it down in. We want it to sit flush all the way around just like that. Now we're ready to grab our hub. That's going to get slid right onto our spindle there. Just like that. Now what I like to do is take our grease gun now and we're going to pump that inside full. You can see these are not easy lube spindles. These are standard spindles, but we wanted that double lip grease seal back there. So now we'll just fill this interior cavity full. Now we're just gonna slowly fill that up all the way around. It's gonna get rid of any air pockets in there. Make sure we don't have moisture that builds up, causes us corrosion issues. Now we'll take our packed outer bearing. Let me get that slid up on there. We've got our washer. Remember we saved that from our removal process. And that's a new nut that comes with our axle kit. Now we're going to use our channel locks. We're going to tighten this all the way up. Now we're going to tighten this down. We're trying to compress everything, get everything seated properly. And we want to tighten that down to about 50 foot-pounds. Once we get it there, without rotating our hub, we're going to loosen that back up and then just run it in finger tight. At that point we've got our keeper. That's going to slide over just like that. And that'll keep that nut from backing off. Now we've got our dust cap. We want to line that up with the end of the hub. And with the dead blow again, we're going to, and we'll drive it in until it seats right down against the hub face. Like that. And we've got our plug. That's going to go right in the end there. All right. And that's the same thing we're going to do for all four positions, depending on how many hubs you're training. Now to get these on properly, we want to tighten this in a star pattern. So we'll go from this one to the one opposite of it, come down to this one and go to the one opposite of it. And you'll want to use a 21 millimeter socket. Once you get them down to the ground, torque them to specification. That's going to complete our look at the Dexter Trailer Hub and Drum Assemblies.